I'm live. It's good enough. There's no one here. Hey! It's two of you. Jared, when are you going to come down here and visit? Cody? Fandiri? Mr. Thompson, T. Willie, John. John, that knife is fucking stupid sharp. Be careful with that. I did not put that in the note. Phil. Who else? So, this isn't going to be a very long live feed. What's up, Dwayne? I just opened a package. my latest mail oh my latest post on instagram or i mean patreon i may have to go look at that um i have something in my hand that you guys haven't seen for a while uh, oh i'm sorry i didn't know you were uh... oh okay um, I haven't been checking my, my phone's on do not disturb. I've been busy out here for a while. The place is a mess. My 100 square foot room that I basically built off of the house that is the only place where I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Hey, Brad, cool that you're here. Let me, let me sidetrack this video. Brad, your knives, knives, knives are here on the bench. Can I put a sharpening notch in this to about here? Uh, because these are terribly hard to sharpen all the way back. They always wind up with a ramp. As you can see, they come from the factory with a ramp. I can take it to about here and drop it down and have it be like a half V, almost like a half heart shape. Um, it'll make it easier for you. I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to be able to sharpen all the way down to the Ricasso on this military. It's, uh, It's just too it's too steep of an angle and too too hard to get the stones down. It tears my stones apart. I love these things though. They're awesome. So anyway, what we are going to talk about is this. I made this, I started this a while back. I thought I was just gonna get rid of it. I didn't think it was gonna ever come out the way I wanted. I'm offering it to you guys now before I put it on Instagram. Because I offered the other knife to the Patreons, this is to you guys. This is a full Damascus one-off, hand-wrapped by me. That wrap is a single continuous one piece. I milled a slot down the middle of this knife. It's actually really comfortable with the wrap. Uh, so there's about six or seven feet of paracord wrapped in and out of that. Well, yeah, about six feet. About six feet of paracord wrapped back and forth so you have something. It's already been sharpened. But the cool thing is Matt down in Florida did an awesome sheath on this. And so this is going up, and I'm offering it to you guys first. I made this for a guy. It was significantly longer. If you remember the video where I tried to blue this, it bent, and then I had to reprofile the entire knife. Um, it still came out really nice. I'm really happy with it, but it's just a matter of, uh, it just came back from sheath. I literally just opened it. Matter of fact, it was still in the envelope with the information here that Matt put in here. Armatist carry architect sheaths come with a rigid retention. The correct way to disengage a knife from the sheath is to push the thumb against the ramp and simultaneously pull the handle of the knife. Please visit armatistcarry.com if you have any questions. It's still in the bag. So, horizontal carry, two soft loops, but the sheath came out freaking awesome. So this, on top of the fact I've had a lot of rum, is uh, something I'm offering to you guys. Anybody got any questions? There's 21 of us here. Uh, I bet you guys want to know how much. 
Uh, maybe, maybe. Hey, Dwayne, I honestly put, I honestly put two business cards in each of your pouches before I even sharpen your knot, Dwayne. I apologize. You guys, if you guys don't know, I get so busy sometimes. I forget to do the little things that I should be doing, like putting business cards in pouches before they go out so that while yes, I know that you guys understand my service, you could recommend me with a business card to someone else. And I forget little things that should go with that. So Dwayne, you've got like four or five business cards coming. I sent an entire, an entire, I think I spent $80 on shipping the other day. And $80 on shipping and I didn't put a single card in any of those boxes. So those were each, each $7. So $80, 80 plus dollars in shipping. So price on this, I was looking right at 350. 350 for the work that went into it. I'm not gonna lie, wrapping this, cause it's tight. Okay, I wanna show you guys how tight I got the wrap on this. You ready? Let's turn the camera around. Turn the camera around. I might be a little drunk, so give me a moment. So, I wrapped this all by hand. The only place where it's married up is there's a knot here where I did melt the two pieces together. Um, I kept a piece of it is run. So basically I had enough length. There's a piece that runs all the way down here and comes out here and then ties into where it comes through on the loop and it's tight. I'm pushing on that pretty hard and it's pretty hard to get any. It's really, really tight. I wrapped it really tight. So... Oh, so you guys can see, I etched the Damascus and it has already been sharpened. I was playing around sharpening that a little bit ago. So now this is not Damasteel. I'm not gonna lie. This is Alabama Damascus. High carbon, high carbon steel. And I didn't etch the entire thing. I thought it would be cool to do a, a little little slight etch on that and let it patina on its own. So that part has been etched, that part has not. But I was thinking right around 350. So if there's none of you guys that are interested in it, I am gonna put it up on Instagram as a auction doing it as an auction. It's cold out here tonight. I actually have the heater on, a sweatshirt, and my Pittsburgh Steelers jacket. So, I did a lot of sharpening today. There's something else I was going to tell you guys about. What else was I going to tell you guys about? Oh! I did a, I did a quick video for the Patreons. Um... Because, like I said, I offered up that knife to them first. So, Brad, I imagine I'm going to do your knife. We're all patriots. I've been a Pittsburgh Steelers fan since I was a kid. Let me see. What else is going on on here? Hey, did you guys, were you guys able to do a uh, beautiful knife, but not for me? Uh, Pardon my French, but fuck the Steelers. I've been a Steelers fan since I was a kid. My dad, so that you guys know, um, so I am from Ohio. My dad was diehard Cleveland Browns fan. But I mean, he watched the he watched Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, he'd watch football. And he liked he liked the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he was a diehard Cleveland Browns fan. I, from the time I was a kid, remember the Mean Joe Green commercial with the Coke and the towel and all that stuff. And I remember that. And my dad, when I was little, little, bought me a terrible towel. And I've been a Pittsburgh Steelers, but I'm I, I'm closer to Pittsburgh than I am to Cleveland. But I've been a Pittsburgh Steelers fan since I was a little kid. And there were times uh, that we were not allowed in the same house during a football game because we, we, we would take it pretty serious. So, It's, uh, I think it's 52 degrees right now at my house. So, <laughs> so anyway, 
my dad got me that towel, and I've been a Pittsburgh Steelers fan for my, since I was a kid. We used to drive to, it's about seven, it's a, it's about an hour, hour and a half, between 60 and 90 minutes to downtown Pittsburgh from my house. And we would drive, sometimes we would drive to, during, during the middle of the week, especially after I graduated high school, we would go, you know, when I was waiting to ship out for the Navy, we would go to Permani Brothers in the Strip District downtown. And Permani Brothers is a sandwich place. And if you ever watched Man Vs. Food, they actually talked about Permani Brothers on there. And so what you got was your sandwich, also on your fries, all together. You could eat it in the car. My grandfather was a long haul truck driver. And he told me about the place. He took me there when I was a kid. And when I got a car, yeah, Permani Brothers. That's my cousin Jake right there. Permanti Brothers in Pittsburgh. We used to drive down there. Once a week, me and some of my friends uh, that I worked with after I, while I was waiting to ship out for the Navy, we would go down there like once a week and eat at Permani Brothers. And it's in the strip district. And my grandfather used to drive trucks. So he knew where it was at. And it was, it was something that was designed for truck drivers. You know, you put the whole, the, both the sides on the sandwich. Sometimes you get an egg on it. Oh, Jake, how good is their corned beef, egg, coleslaw, and uh, and uh, fries sandwich. Oh, it's so good. It's all smushed together. It's in th oh, so good. So, anyway, that knife is up. I'm drinking rum. Oh, somebody asked. Mike, I was drinking. Got hammered. Sports club called Tiffany's. <laughs> Cleveland Flats. Tiffany's on a Cleveland Flats. Yeah. You want to know uh, a little story about the um the fact that this side of my face is a different shape than this side of my face. And you guys asked about, I've told you guys about the scar. That happened in Cleveland Flats. I hit in the face with a fucking piece of pipe, got my eye socket, the orbital bone, and eye socket broken. And that's why this side of my face has got a little divot and I got that scar and that big scar here. I get the shit beat out of me. Because I don't know if you know this, it doesn't matter how much martial arts you've studied. If you get hit in the face with a piece of pipe, you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. Cleveland Flats. I got my scars. I learned some lessons. That's that's when you that's when you learn that hey, all that shit you think you know, you get hit in the face real hard, that shit flies away. <laughs> You're like, oh fuck. I'm unconscious. This this isn't so much. This I got my face kicked into the fucking pavement one time in Japan. I got robbed, but I do it again. <laughs> Oh, Cleveland Flats is a nice. It's it's way different than it was in the time frame we're thinking of, Dwayne. I'm thinking twenty years ago. When I was like twenty two, twenty three. <laughs> Got the fucking piss beat out of me. It's fun though. It was a good night. It ain't a good night unless you fucking wind up tasting your own blood. You're like, ah, oh, it was a good night. Fucking just as long as you're not coughing it up. If you're coughing it up, that's not a good thing. So yeah. Can I just see another picture of it? Do you want a burrito? Do I want a burrito? Sure. No, we don't. Both. I'm doing a video. Everyone can hear you right now. Why are you eating both? Why am I eating both? Because I'm fat. <laughs> I've got two scars on my eye. This, this actually came from a... I got... I got into it in Japan with some dudes and I got my face stomped into the pavement. I got my tooth kicked through my lip. That scar that you see right there is a secondary. It was much worse. You can actually, you can probably see it. Yeah. Got the shit kicked out of me in Japan. Um, so I was in a restaurant with some friends and I had come back, I was on vacation, I'd come back to Japan and there was some dudes in there and they called them Bosozoku. They're these guys that want to be mafia, they want to be gangsters, but they ride around on motorcycles, they make a bunch of noise, bam, 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 and they, they block traffic and shit. No one likes them. They're a bunch of fucking assholes. And so, so anyway, we were in a bar and we were eating and I, I had quit, I quit smoking years ago and it was a lot of smoke in the room and it was starting to bother me anyway and I told I told my buddy that we needed to go somewhere else and we went to go eat somewhere else and we walk in and these guys are in the uh these guys come in and they start making a bunch of ruckus and we're i was like fuck 
and everybody started smoking again and I'm like god damn it fucking Japan and these people just smoking in the restaurants and uh, anyway everything was kind of okay until they pushed they started playing around and they started pushing the waitress around and the waitress spilled an entire tray of drinks well the guy that runs the place the guy that's in charge and this was in um, they call it uh, it, it's the yakitori it's the food on the stick and there's a guy behind the bar and he runs the place and he does all the grill master he's the taisho and this guy started yelling at this girl because she spilled an entire tray of like glasses of fucking sake and and beer and and shots of whiskey and he yelled at her and so i yell at the guys that had done it i was like hey why don't you fucking guys get out of here i was doing it in japanese go away get out of here no one wants you here and when i said it the big the big white dude everybody's like yeah get out of here nobody wants you and they fucking started they started rabble rousing and fucking running their mouths and but they left and a couple hours later after i had had significantly more drinks and it's fucking full of smoke in there i told my buddy that i was with i was like hey i'm gonna go out and start the car you can drive your, your brother-in-law can your brother-in-law can drive i'm gonna get the car started get the air conditioner on because it's it's summer it's like 105 degrees outside and i wasn't in uniform i was civilian i've been i'd been retired for a couple years and so i, I fucking walk outside and i go out of a dark place into a bright lit parking lot I'm like uh and all of a sudden i get this flash and i'm on the ground and i was like oh what the fuck i was like i'm not that drunk and i started to get up and that's when i got kicked in the face and busted my lip tooth right through my lip split my eyebrow open and i was like oh I'm in a fight. It's time to get up. And as I started to get up, there was a dude that stomped down on my head and drove my face into the pavement, split my fucking cheek open, took all the skin off my cheek, big split in my cheek. And I was like, and then they started just kicking the ever living shit out of me because there's about five of them. And uh, I'm in, you know, I'm on the, I'm in the parking lot. I'm laying on the fucking pavement. And I, I was like, okay, get your legs together and put your dick on the pavement because they can't kick you in the balls like that. I put my hands on the side of my head and put my forehead on the pavement. I got kicked in the top of the head. I got stomped. And I was like, this this is bad. And it felt like for fucking ever I was getting the shit kicked out of me. And that's when I heard my buddy come out of the bar. And he's American. And I hear, hey, fuckers. And his brother-in-law was with him. And I fucking knew that it was going to get better because it was five on three, not five on me. And, uh, yeah, I got the shit kicked out of me that night. It was bad. I got some scars from that one. I got scars from that one. I got a scar on my lip where my tooth went clear through my lip. That's not what this video was about. God damn it, you guys can distract me. I'm retired military, bro. It cost me $35 a month for full coverage. Nope. My medical bills are fine. You guys paid my medical bills. I'm taking a Caribbean cruise. This had been in our refrigerator for two years. My wife drank one glass of it. Yeah, I've been kicked in the head a lot. A lot. Yeah, it's going to be safe on the internet. I mean, every everybody that knows me kind of already knows it. And then there's another scar up here in my eyebrow from when I was down in Kagoshima with my buddy Quentin and I got so drunk that I just fucking passed out and went face first into the fucking gravel. That's the... There's a, a scar up here somewhere. But the, the, the good ones, like the one that you can see, the ones, the ones you can see through clothing, those all have good stories to go with them. That, the one up here... Like, I've got two of them. I've split my eye, my right eyebrow open twice. Once was, you know, I kicked in the fucking face. Well, lots. We won that fight, as a matter of fact. When I got up, I'm pretty sure I broke the fucking dude that was standing over me. Once I realized that, that my buddy and his his brother had come out of the bar, um, once I was able to get up, I fucking hit a dude. I'm, keep in mind, I'm 6'3", 225, 230 pounds, and I'm not all fat. I still... I can still fucking lift some weight. And I hit that dude with this. That big fucking hand. 
right in the fucking lower ribs and the floating ribs. And I felt shit give. I know I broke several ribs. Uh, I've been in a lot of fights in one. I got, I got a story about this one now. Eh, 20 yeah. minutes. I'm going to try and keep this under 30. At teeth. Right there. Hadn't even been drinking. Fight broke out. Didn't have anything to do with it. I turned around because I heard a scuffle in time to see the bottom of a beer bottle. You know those little, those little fucking ribs on the bottom of a brown beer bottle? Clearly could see it and hit me right in the mouth. Knocked, broke my tooth off. Had to have emergency root canal. And I am allergic to the numbing agent that they use for that. So I sat there, white knuckled it and just gutted out a fucking root canal. What was that there? Somebody else said something. How many tattoos do you have where you don't remember when and got it? Okay. I'd like to show you. I woke up. Worst one ever. All right, guys, hang on a second. I woke up in the Philippines in a hotel room. With that. Now, I had went out the night before with my cousin. And another guy. Two other guys. My cousin and two other guys. And we went out and we got... <laughs> Let's say the last thing I remember... It's like 10 o'clock in the morning and we had just paid a guy 60 bucks to go get us beer at the 7-Eleven. And he came back with two garbage bags full of beer. We had already been drinking a lot. So that's the, pretty much the last thing I remember. The sun was well still up when I, last thing I remember. So I wake up the next morning. I wake up the next morning and I'm in a hotel room with my cousin. I had a cousin that was on my first ship with me. Distant cousin. I mean, we're not real, real close, but at any rate, I wake up the next morning. And I'm in bed with a female, and I didn't recognize an American chick. I'm like, oh, God, fuck. who is this? My arm itched, and I scratched it. I was like, ah, oh, God damn it. And I was like, what the fuck happened? And I looked on my arm, and I was like, oh, it's the fucking ugliest tattoo ever. So meanwhile, I wake up a little bit, and I realize that my cousin has got his foot up on, a, on the desk, in the hotel room, smoking a cigarette, got a beer in his hand. He goes, I think that's bad. Come look at this. And he has got a shark with a big toothy grin, dreadlocks and a crown. And underneath it, it says, we be jamming, tattooed on his left ankle that he had up on the bench. And I was like, oh God. And he goes, I think that's bad. Look out the window. I looked out the window and I was like, that's not Manila. He goes, yeah, I don't know where the fuck we're at. We got drunk, gave up our hotel room in Manila, got in a fucking taxi and went halfway across the island to a place called Angeles City. Don't even fucking remember it. The only concern I had was, what fucking day is it? Because I had been known to go out drinking on a Monday and lose track of shit till Wednesday. I would go out and get blackout drunk and stay that way for days on end. So Chad, like, no, dude, dude. I was like, oh, cool, Whew, we're good, we're good. I was like, who is this in bed? That's Midshipman McDuffie. And I was like, oh, at least it's the hot one. <laughs> we be jamming. Careful the questions you ask. I'll answer them, motherfucker. I already told you guys, I will do anything on this channel that you guys pretty much ask as long as it does not... As long as it doesn't... compromise my morals, which I don't have a lot of, or require that I be naked on camera. I'm in not... I'm not in the shape that I was when I was younger. I used to be in really good shape. Caught me in my mid-twenties. If the YouTube was a thing in my mid-twenties, I'd be naked all the time on YouTube. 
What happened with the gal? I woke her up and said, why the fuck are you still here? I'm done. Get out. So we were with two other guys that were supposed to be with us. And we're like, oh, what about them? What about Mikey and Clay? And I was like, oh, shit. Me and Chad were like, oh, fuck. What about Mikey and Clay? And all but fucking five minutes later, I'm like drinking a beer because we had a garbage bag full of warm beer. And so I grab a beer, you know, because it's fucking it's morning. Fuck it. I'm awake. I have a beer. Beer for breakfast. Because beer has food value, but food has zero fucking beer value. So I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, what about Clay and Mikey? And he's like, oh, shit. And all of a sudden I hear, hey, Mike. I was like, they're here. <laughs> they were with us. <laughs> Where the fuck are you? Down the hall. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're going to get the cops up here. And they were like, we're in the Philippines. Just pay them. I was like, fair, fair enough. That works. It's not real strong rum. See how sharp I can get a knife wasted? Um, Jerry, I don't know if you know this. Half of the knives I've sharpened, I'm either wasted or high, and they come out perfectly fine. Brad, I was going to talk to you about that knife. I got playing around with it. I'll, I'll try some more. I think it's just a bad heat treat, bro. I, I really feel bad about the fact that we put that much work into it. But it does, I had already, it's, it's right here. I was playing with it before I got your military. Uh, I was actually, no joke, before I started this, I was going to uh, text you and see. It just seems like it does not want to take an edge. I'll try, I mean, I, I'll try some more. Um, what, what I can, what I can tell you I will do is I will take this with me. If you give me a little bit of time, I'll do the other one. If you give me some time, I'm gonna get with Elliot and we'll take a look at it. This is is supposed to be S35VN, right? I, I just, it does not feel, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love how it came out with the orange peel. I really, really feel bad about the fact it just didn't hold an edge. I mean, it feels sharp and I'm gonna try and, and do some stuff with it. But if I can't do anything with it, I'm gonna take it to Elliot and Elliot are gonna fucking take a good hard look at it and see the other thing too is this it's it's kind of thick behind the edge i may try to i may try to thin it out a little bit because it's hollowed but it's it's really thick at the at the edge so um there's some adhesive on it there i'm sorry there was some adhesive on it um sometimes adhesive will Sometimes adhesive will block how stuff cuts, but yeah, this I just I feel bad because yeah, it I I worked on it and I got you your orange peel. Now what I will tell you is, do you want to color on top of this orange peel while I've got it, Brad? Ah, that's a fart. Oh, you want to do green? I can do green for you. It'd just be a matter of me taking it back apart and uh, soaking it. Were you happy with the orange peel? Just curious because it's that's a lot of orange peel to do. <laughs> It'd be nice with a mass spectrometer. Here's the thing. I, you know what? I can do I can sharpen. I'm drunk enough that I'll brag. I can sharpen fucking anything. You want a license plate? sharpen i'll fucking sharpen it i can fucking i sharpened a dog tag for a dude one time and then he told me i should fucking patent that and i didn't think about it but guess what they sell now a dog tag shaped knife don't send me sores my wife's calling me so guess what it's supper time i said i was gonna do this for 30 minutes uh thanks for the stream in the middle of pimping some cheapos right now i hear you so I'm going to close this out. I'll get this loaded up. Um, any of you guys that are interested in that custom, just let me know. I'll, I'll fucking answer your questions. I'm a little bit drunker than I should be. 
this early in the evening. Got the heater on. I hear you. I know. I know. I know. I know. I hear you. I'm coming. So no, I'm not in trouble. My supper's ready, and she's calling me. So you guys take it easy. I told you to be about a 30 minute live feed. I just wanted to do another one real quick. I uh, for you guys that are Patreons, if you haven't checked, I put up a, a video about the knife I'm offering straight to the Patreons first. So all right, guys. I do have to get off here and go eat supper. I will talk to you guys later. Later.